My name is Elle Marie Cook. I wrote a book called Lay Me Down. It is a non-fiction collection of stories and I will be reading chapter four or a section of chapter four called Le Vie en Rose. The summer before my freshman year of high school, my dad sent me to Nice, France for a summer at a French language school. My dad had been stationed in France when he was in, a, in the army and had always wanted one of his daughters to spend time there. I was so excited when my dad told me he wanted to send me to France. What 14-year-old wouldn't be stoked to go to a foreign country, unsupervised, where there is no official drinking age and kids can buy cigarettes? The night before I was to leave for France, my mother came into my room and begged me not to go. Please, Leslie, don't do this. You'll change, she pleaded. Uh, that's kind of the point, isn't it? And off I went. The school was a big pink seminary, Le Maison du Seminaire, only a few steps from the vast and chilly turquoise Mediterranean Sea. I shared a room with a bitchy girl from New York, and all the students resided on the third and fourth floors. The second floor was all priests and nuns in their black garb. The nuns would play harps every morning from 10 to 11 a.m., and it was like I was still in a dream to hear them. The sound would echo up the stone walls and through the old hallways and staircases, blinging away. Every morning I would sit on the terrace overlooking the ocean with a cup of black coffee, half a baguette, and Nutella. After I finished my petit déjeuner, I would go to the, my three-hour language class, and then I had the rest of the afternoon to myself. I would sometimes go back to the front terrace to eat my lunch of more bread, red wine, and cheese, and that's when I first noticed the proprietor's son, Julian. He was 18 and a skater boy. He wore world industry hat every day, baggy jeans, and a t-shirt, that, and he had a cast on his arm from a recent fall attempting to jump some stairs on his skateboard. I thought he was so hot. He even had a cliche mole over his lip. He didn't speak any English, but when our, our eyes met, there was fire in them. He came over and sat down with me, and we started a basic conversation. Name, age, where I was from, etc. Turned out he stayed in the room across the hall from me, and I could smell his cologne every day. I just didn't know it was his until he sat down next to me. He had such a sweet smell. It was flowery yet masculine, mis mixed with Marlboro Reds. He asked if I wanted to go down by the water. I did. We went to some big con concrete pilings by the Porto Nice and sat smoking cigarettes and he kissed me. And that's how I knew he liked me. Language barrier and all. Soon after we met, I started smoking too, and only I smoked Capri's and Marlboro ultralights. I also started sneaking across the hall and jumping into Julian's bed. It was too easy. He would leave his door open. If it was open, it meant I could go in, and if it was closed, he wasn't home. The first time I went in there, it was dark, and he had his CD player playing on his play PlayStation. His smell filled the room, and I just couldn't help myself. I threw myself on the bed and kissed him, and on top of him and ground against him. I tried to put my hand in his pants, but he didn't let me, so we just dry humped for hours. He sucked on my ears and neck. Je t'aime, he whispered in my ear, and I sat up. What? I asked, confused. I thought he just said he loved me, so he said it in English, I love you. That was the first time I'd ever heard those words from someone. I didn't know what to think. I mean, I liked this guy, but we'd only just met and had literally only gone to, well, third or whatever base. But I said it back, je t'aime aussi.